Hi there, welcome back. We're in the Colorado and Company backyard. It's gorgeous today on this Wednesday. I have my favorite Jeff Coat Ranger, Marianne Bunnell, and we're going to talk about the creature on the trail we need to look out for. Snakes, they can really fake us out, can't they? They can. Yeah. So a lot of people, actually, first of all, they think it's too early to see snakes right now. So this is snake on, season? Snake season is on. We've yeah. actually had several sightings in our parks. First, it starts with bull snakes and garter snakes, and then we actually had rattlesnake sightings yesterday oh. in a couple of our parks. Oh my gosh, that just creeps me out. So don't be fooled, out. it's not too early. So even if it's a cool morning, you can still encounter a snake? Yes, you can. So the thing with snakes is they, they need to warm up in the sun, so they heat their bodies externally. So a cool morning is actually kind of an ideal morning to see a snake, especially if it's a sunny, cool morning. So the trail is a perfect opportunity for a snake to bask. Right. So they will actually park it on the trail or next to the trail, or they might even use the parking lot or some place where that sun can really bake the ground warm, they're going to use that to warm their bodies up. So besides the parking lot and trails, what other places should we be on the lookout for for snakes? Well, again, this time of year, since they're just kind of waking up from their hibernation, they're going to be parked next to their hibernacula. A lot of snakes will hibernate in rocky crevices, so you might see them parked out on a sunny rock, or you might see them next to, you might see them right next to the trail, or you might actually see one on a prairie dog mound, because some of them will spend the winter in a prairie dog hole. So there's a lot of places where you might see a snake, and again, next to a rock that's sunny, right. any place like that that's going to be warm and toasty for oh those chilly gosh, mornings. I see that little sucker. That one was a real tough one to spot. Totally that's a picture hidden. I took. Yes. Wow, that is so scary. I would be walking along and wouldn't even notice that. That's really scary. I didn't notice it until oh it rattled, and then I saw it, and then I took that and picture. And you stayed around to take the I, picture? After Are I levitated kidding? and went back down to the ground. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. All right, so we have some pictures, and we're uh -huh. going to figure out which one is poisonous, which one is not. Okay. Is it a bull snake or is it a rattlesnake? Let's take a look at this picture right here, and you tell me. Okay, so what we want to do is there's a telltale sign here, and this is, this is yeah, absolutely the rattle. So if the snake has a rattle, it, chances are it's a rattlesnake. Now this one, it looks like as a picture of a timber rattler, which is not a species we find in Colorado, but prairie rattlesnakes also have a real prominent rattle. So okay. that's a way to tell you're looking at a rattlesnake so for if sure. So if it has a rattle on it, then it's poisonous? Um, if it has a rattle, then it's a rattlesnake, and we actually call them venomous rather okay. than poisonous because they could bite. So, so this is a great picture because this shows you April Fools. Okay. Some people are fooled into thinking that a bull snake that they're seeing next to the trail is actually a rattlesnake. I'm thinking the right one is a rattlesnake, no? And you would be correct. So yes. what you're looking for is those white stripes on the face. Those are telltale for looking at a rattlesnake. Even if you can't see a rattle, those white stripes next to the eyes are going to be really obvious. The bull snake on the left, he's got that kind of dark mark through the eye, he or she, I guess, I wouldn't know. Um, and the coloration, too, is very different. Bull snakes tend to be a little bit in the yellow, you know, with brown right. spots and that rattlesnake is going to look more gray or greenish when you see it. Okay, let's do it again. I never thought I'd play a game about snakes, <laughs> but here I oh, here am we go. with Marianne. Okay, okay I'm thinking um, I'm thinking the left. You are correct. Is that so right? left is rattlesnake. This one, again, you can see those nice white stripes on the eye. Ugh. You can also see on that rattlesnake the pit because rattlesnakes are pit vipers. So they're going to be using that extra hole on the face to sort of sense heat. The bull snake on the right doesn't have those pits and has, again, lacking that white striping on the face. Hopefully, you're not going to be that close that's to so the scary. snake when you spot it, but that's going to help you with some ID tips. You can see that white striping from actually yeah. very far away on a rattlesnake. Snake. And the kind of rattlesnake that we have here? We have prairie rattlesnakes prairie here in rattlesnake. Colorado, and the good news about prairie rattlesnakes is they tend to be a little bit shyer than some of the other species of rattlesnakes, good. so they'd rather leave us alone. Okay, what other types of snakes will we see on the trail? So the common snakes we see trailside are, as we already covered, we see rattlesnakes, we see bull snakes. Also in Colorado, you'll want to know how to identify your local garter snakes. And the one we see often next to the trail is the western terrestrial garter snake, which again lacks striping on the eye and has kind of a real drabby pattern. It's just kind of dark gray. You know, my son came in and holding a snake <laughs> in the house, and I'm in downstairs in my recording studio. I feel this tap. Uh, I turn around. He's like, "Can I keep it? Out? <laughs> your can I keep it?" I'm like, "Get it out! It's a baby snake." So I uh -huh. couldn't tell if it was a rattlesnake or not. Yeah. Well, and again, the baby rattlesnake's still going to have that uh, white striping okay, so on the face. Okay, so it was a snake then. Well, you would hope. Yes, if your son's holding. If my son. Yeah. <laughs> what a great mom I am. Mom of the year right here. What happens if I see a snake? What should I do? Great question. So what we recommend is give the snake space and time. So once you see it, stop. 
stop, maybe even take a step back, give that space, that snake, excuse me, space and time to recognize that you're a human, it doesn't really want to deal with you, and it's probably going to find its way off the trail. And that's the best way to avoid negative absolutely, interaction. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Give it space. And another thing we need to talk about, dogs. I yes. mean, when I'm on the trail, I take my dogs. Absolutely. How do we protect them? Well, dogs are super curious, so yeah. dogs and snakes don't necessarily mix. So the one thing we say is the best antidote for snake venom is to have a leash on your dog and make sure your dog is under your control. So you know where your dog is, you know where your dog's sniffing around, you know what your dog's interacting with. If you see a snake, you can actually bring your dog in and have your dog come next Protect to you and be safe. Yeah. If the dog's off leash, all bets are off as right. to whether that dog's going to be smart enough to leave that snake alone. And I think it's wonderful. You all made a commercial about it, too. We did. We did a little Instagram, yes. Okay, let's take a look. Awesome. That's a great commercial. Isn't great that fun? Yes. <laughs> Any other thoughts you want to share? I mean, last time we talked about mud. <laughs> well, with the snow coming up, that yeah. we've got actually snow predicted on, I think, uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. we're going to want to think about muddy trails again. So if you're thinking about going hiking on Friday or Saturday, you want to think about how muddy is that trail and how willing am I get to my, get my boots muddy. Right. But also, it is such an incredible time of year. I was out on patrol last weekend. We've got wildflowers starting to bloom. I saw my first turkey vultures of the season yesterday. Oh, so fun. it's really fun. It's spring. It's wonderful. You have a wonderful job. I really know do. it. Except I... the snake part. No way. Well, <laughs> right. I get to talk about it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marianne. All right. If you'd like to learn more and take notice of what's around you on the trail, because it is snake season, people, follow Marianne Bunnell online at jeffco.us slash parks. That's jeffco.us slash parks. And properly plan your next outdoor adventure with the help of Jefferson County Open Space.